Hi guys, thanks so much for joining me today. In this video, we're gonna take a look at my architectural photography editing process. Now, it's something that I've spoken about a little bit recently, um, but if you've not caught those videos, I'm just gonna go over a really quick overview of my editing process to initially get my client some nice proofs back to look at and me doing that with as much efficiency and speed as I possibly can while still getting a really nice photo edit from it. So I'll just show you the actual project that I photographed. So as you can see in front of me here, we've got a really nice home that I was at yesterday. Um, I was there for approximately six, seven hours and I photographed it right from the daytime right through to the evening and into that beautiful sort of like evening dusk light and what I wanted to do is just show you guys um, a really quick process I use to get a photograph for example from this let's take a look at it when I first brought it into Lightroom the initial image looked like this I've actually just photographed from a tripod a set of five images and they're nothing special um, they've all had uh, an import process applied to them so you did see briefly so if I reset this click that you'll see what that image looked like initially so these photographs are just a bracketed set so I capture multiple exposures from what the camera thinks is the base exposure I do too dark too light and then I've got all the elements to play with so that for example see here on this light here it's very hot very bright it's going to be difficult for me to bring in that brick detail uh, from this image alone for example if i drop the exposure down uh, i mean this camera sensor is fantastic but if we look at that it's just not a particularly nice detail there but for my initial proofs i'm not going to worry about that whatsoever so what is the process the first thing we're going to do is import the image into lightroom with a nice preset applied and basically what that is going to do is just boost up the shadows as you saw there and bring down the highlights whilst at the same time not washing everything out not flattening it out we want to maintain some nice contrast and i do that just by boosting the clarity and the contrast so if i actually hold the alt or um, option key on the mac and what we can do is actually reset the tone and you'll see what that looked like beforehand and i'll double click that arrow as well and we can get rid of clarity and haze and you can just see what i do really quickly so basically i'm just bringing the contrast up a little bit we'll bring the highlights down bring the shadows all the way up and, and look at all that information that's brought back because we just want to let the architect the client the designer see what's going on in the photo so that they can choose they can make a valid decision as to whether or not they want to license this image um, but when we've brought the shadows up and the highlights down it does get a little washed out a little flat and that's where we can use our whites by boosting those and bring the blacks down just to bring back a little bit of that contrast and to help that out as well we can just bring the clarity up if we push it all the way to 100 we get a really punchy image but i think that's just a little bit too much so we might have it somewhere around there and we might tickle in just a smidging of a dehaze there as well um, i usually like to bring in with my preset just a little bit of vibrance as well if there's color in the image it's going to show the architect exactly what he's going to get from the final image or sorry not exactly it's going to hint towards what the final image might look like okay so we've got our preset applied the next thing that we'd like to do um, that's a really powerful tool is we're going to use the transform tool just to make sure that the sides of the building are nice and straight and i strongly advise if you're doing any architectural photography real estate photography editing architecture in any way you've got to make sure the sides of the building are straight unless there's a really specific angle that you've gone for where it's all deliberate but back in the day you would have actually grabbed these sliders and moved them around until you'd actually got those sides of the building about straight and you might do the same for the horizontal as well just to correct that um, those days thankfully are kind of gone and for me they've been superseded by the uh, guided transform tool so i click that so in the transform drop down box let's close all of this so we can see what's going on transform drop down box we'll come to guided and then we click on this little guided upright tool and that is going to allow us to click and drag 
down to actually define what should be a vertical line. So let's go right to the edge of the garage and let go and boom, it's straightened our image for, me, for us. Isn't that awesome? And if we want to, we can do the same for the horizontal. So you find a line that you know should be true and straight and we'll drag that across there. You can use the magnification there to really help you fine tune this, but I don't, I don't go too nuts with that, particularly at this stage. That is close enough. Now, what are we gonna do about these white edges here? I think the best option here is just to use the crop tool. So let's lock the ratio. So we're keeping true to our three to two, and let's start to bring those corners in until the whites are gone. Um, that's one way to do it. The other quicker way is actually just to click the constrain crop button. And if let's say we'd reset our crop and nothing had been done, we just tick that box. Boom, it's going to bring it in so that those edges meet where those white, white bits are. But I don't always like the framing it gives you. So you normally end up having to reduce the size of it anyway and just shift it around like we're doing here. When you're happy with your crop, double click, we're done. So the very last thing that I like to do is a really powerful editing tool that you can apply to real estate, architectural photography, and that is your local adjustments. And so we're gonna enhance different areas of the picture, as I alluded to, locally. So not overall adjustments, local adjustments. So in this case, we might look at what needs to be done. For instance, I might want to darken down the sky. So let's, let's bring a, a gradient over the top here and whatever the previous one was is still there, which is pretty ugly. So again, we can reset that holding Alt or Option and that changes the effect there to reset. So let's click that. And now we're free to just play with that. So let's bring the exposure down, highlights down, maybe increase the contrast, um, bring the shadows up slightly. If we bring the whites up, that'll bring a little bit more contrast as well. And we can even change the color. We can push that further towards the blues, maybe a little bit of magenta there. Um, and if we look at that sort of before and after just by hitting the delete key, and I'm gonna throw that back on. We've certainly, I think, enhanced the sky, but the effect is coming all over the building as well. So what we're gonna do is use the range mask, go to the color option, and using the eyedropper tool, I'm just gonna sample the color just by dragging over the blues and the pinks and then let go. And it's gonna mask that off of the building. If I show you the selected mask overlay, you can see where it's kind of ready pink, that's showing you what it's affecting. Um, and it's not really affecting the build, building in this case, which is great. If you don't see this option here to turn this mask on and off, that's the toolbar and you can just press T to hide or show that particular toolbar. So I'm gonna press T now just to hide that, give me more real estate to deal with uh, for my photo. And let's carry on just making some local adjustments. Let's brighten this area of the sky here so it's as if the sun's just set over there. Um, and then I think we'll actually make this area here where it's all muddy and he's actually gonna plant some uh, shrubbery, he said. Um, but let's just suppose maybe it's gonna be grass or something. It's certainly not gonna be mud. Let's see if we can correct that. Let's just let's just dive in here. Look, let's throw throw a radial filter over there. You can you can see what we're dealing with here, which is a nasty yellowy green thing. But let's um, let's change the temperature so it's nice and warm. Let's boost the exposure up there, and now let's just control those highlights by dragging those down. And you can see again we've affected the building as well. So what we're going to do is just grab the range mask, go to color. And again, I'm just gonna drag that over this area here and boom, you can see it straight away disappeared from the building. Lovely. Now let's see if we can deal to that grass, shall we? Now one way to do that would either be to brush it in or we can actually just use a radial filter. And now in this case, our green is that's a preset on this brush is working perfectly for us. Let's darken it down. Let's reduce the contrast, bring the whites down as well, because we're just trying to um, give a hint of greenery, hint of grass, but we certainly don't want a lot of clarity. Don't want, um, we don't want people's attention to be drawn to it. So 
uh, let's let's say we were happy with that for example and we just wanted it not on the fence and not on the pavement here either so with our radial adjustment selected what we need to do is erase that effect from the concrete and probably the fence as well so what we can't do is come to brush and choose a raise and we're going to make sure the flow is pretty high because I don't want to spend too much time going back and forth over this and we just sort of start to erase that from the pavement so we'll get rid of that there there we go just a little bit of a processor delay I'm actually asking quite a lot of my system at the moment I've got far too many files sat on here at the moment um, and there's hardly any breathing room for windows there's hardly any space for memory and I'm really really asking a lot of the system uh, but there we go that's that done so if we were to uh, look at our before and after now so we can see where we've come from and where we ended up so with a slight processor delay there you go you can see it so that is a much better image that we can send through to our client guys thanks so much for watching i hope that's been helpful please uh, try these techniques out in your real estate photography architectural photography and do let me know if you found them useful um, i'd really appreciate it and i'd love to hear from you so leave a comment below guys and i'll catch you in the next video thanks a lot bye for now